Man, these M3 chips are getting really fast. Yeah, but you know what's crazy is the M4 is going to be even faster. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine going even faster than this. This is. Gonna... But that doesn't even begin to tell us where the M4 Pro chip is going to go. Oh wow, they're going above the regular M4. That's gonna be crazy. But what's gonna be even more crazy is the M4 Max chip. That's really going to unlock some more neural cores. Yeah, I don't even know what I would do with that much performance. But what's even crazier is they're gonna do an M4 Ultra chip that's really going to unlock the Mac Pro's potential. Yeah, what would anyone possibly need that much performance for? Like, can it get even... But what's better? even crazier is this year Apple's actually gonna make an M4 Extreme chip that goes above the Ultra, and they're not gonna be relying on Ultra Fusion anymore. Now they're just gonna be building a new die from the ground up to be extremely fast. But what's even crazier is Apple's working on the M5 chip and that's gonna be on us. How long can we really keep this up people? That's what I'm starting to wonder honestly because you know I've heard many say in the past that Apple shouldn't release a new iPhone every year because there's just not enough to changes but I feel like the iPhone being Apple's bread and butter and still having the bulk of the revenue for the company it's kind of justified because we use our phones a lot and there are so many different devices all at once. There are instant communicators that we always have on us and with us. There are cameras. People use them for work. People use them for gaming. People use them for pleasure for keeping in touch with their loved ones. But with the Mac, I feel like it's a bit more specialized. It's like, yeah, you do work on it and it's a bit more productivity focused than say a smartphone is. But because there's only so many design changes they can make every so many years, I'm starting to wonder if Apple should really be refreshing them annually. Because according to a lot of the most recent Bloomberg reports from Mark Gurman, Apple's planning on dropping the M4 chip later this year. Okay guys, just within a matter of months. And I'm still Still feeling like didn't the m3 chip just come out like at the very end of last year we got the m3 m3 pro m3 max all at once and it sounds like before even finishing the m3 family of chips apple would rather just go straight to the m4 so straight in fact that many macs will probably leapfrog the m3 entirely because the m4 development has already started it's very likely that the mac mini is not going to see an m3 chip of any kind and also there's a good chance that the mac studio and the mac pro are never going to be rocking M3 silicon because Apple is already wanting to hit the ground running with the M4 chips and we could be seeing our first M4 Mac which is most likely to be a base model 14 inch MacBook Pro you know the one with just the two Thunderbolt ports on the side that's probably getting the M4 chip around October or November of this year which feels a little fast for me personally I mean especially when there's no other design changes there's no other camera improvements there's not even really rumored to be any kind of battery life improvements as well. I thought when Apple transitioned to their own silicon away from Intel, the upgrades with the Macs would be a bit more consistent and repeatable, but no, it seems like they're kind of still doing that thing that Intel did where you could have multiple refreshes for a single Mac within the course of a year. That's already happened with the 15-inch MacBook Air. It started with the M2 chip, and then it got an M3 chip before that model had turned a year old. So the lineups and the refreshes are still getting a little bit off and a little bit confused. I guess I should have expected it to be a lot more like the iPad line than the iPhone line. iPhone's a lot more consistent. It's just kind of like, hey, September every year, we're getting some new iPhones. But with the Mac, it's like, I don't know, we could get two this year or we might not get any for two or three years. And maybe Apple likes that. Maybe they prefer that unpredictability so that you're never quite sure when is the right time to buy one and you have to base your buying decision off of random YouTubers. Uh, can you imagine? But I have some theories on why Apple might be kind of quick to rush over to the M4. And of course, it's 2024 and we're talking about a tech company, so we can't stop with the use of the term AI. But yes, Tim Cook himself has been hyping up a lot of Apple's generative AI features that are supposed to be unveiled at Dub Dub this year. And my personal guess is Apple's going to be doubling down on a lot of these AI features with enhanced neural cores that are just not currently present in a lot of the M2 and M2. 
M3 chip families, and that's why Apple's gonna be rushing to get the M4 out the window because these M4 chips, sure, are being manufactured on a new process that TSMC has been working on that's supposed to make them faster and more efficient, so of course, it should be a reasonable upgrade across the board, like, yeah, it's probably, on average, about 10 to 20% faster than the M3 chip through everything, whether it be 3D modeling or gaming or video exporting or audio engineering or code compiling. All of that stuff gets marginally better year over year. That's why Apple's always comparing the latest Macs to like five-year-old Macs to make them sound faster and sound like a bigger improvement. But they also probably want to enhance the neural core capabilities on the M4 to further showcase to the investment community to please all of the shareholders. Hey, look, we're leaders in the AI field because we have silicon that's more efficient and more AI capable than anybody else's silicon out there, which from a company leadership standpoint is probably not a bad idea considering Apple's probably not going to have that many software advantages for much longer with so many governments cracking down on what Apple's allowed to keep restricted to their own ecosystem. It sounds like the federal government and foreign governments are going to be making sure Apple keeps everything open and cross compatible and prevents Apple from wanting to generate too many software advantages by going with an Apple product. So maybe Apple wants to double down on their in-house design silicon as a reason to keep buying Apple products. Don't consider going elsewhere because no one else is going to have the same great AI capabilities that our silicon is going to be rocking. And that's why the M3 chip family might be done a lot earlier than we initially expected. I honestly did not think that the M3 family would all be unveiled at once last October and then there would be no more M3 chips. But yeah, there has been a lot of talk in the rumor community lately that Apple is building out new chips that go above the M3 Ultra specifically so that they can justify the scaling of the performance with machines like the Mac Pro. But what's funny to me is still they don't want to talk about redesigning it. They still want to recycle this cheese grater design that was really optimized for a more modular system built on the x86 architecture with Intel. Not so much an Apple Silicon architecture, but hey, if they were to design a Mac Pro to be built from the ground up for Apple Silicon, it would probably look like a Mac Studio and that's kind of already what they're selling. But they know that just doubling up on the M3 chip existing with the Ultra Fusion connection wouldn't result in that much of a net gain, just like how the M2 Ultra was not all that impressive to a lot of people and you were probably much better off just settling with an M2 Max. That's why they're going back to the drawing board with the M4 family to try to scale up the dies and not just double up chips together, instead build a whole new chip with a bunch of performance cores, probably remove most if not all all of the efficiency cores because with a machine like the Mac Pro or even the Mac Studio, they know that those kind of performance users don't care all that much about efficiency. They're all just about how much power can I get and if you care about efficiency, just go with a MacBook Pro. They're already so powerful. You can turn them into desktops with external monitors if you so desire, but yeah, the real big debate that I'm struggling with to get excited for these M4 family of chips is because, for one, we just keep hearing about AI features. We don't know exactly what those are going to look like. How gimmick or practical are they really going to be? Is Apple just going to have their own version of ChatGPT and knowing Apple and how privacy focused they are and how they don't like to use a lot of data collection, how good can it really get? Especially if Apple wants to partner with Google, then we can already kind of access a lot of those features through Gemini on other hardware anyway. What can Apple really natively put in their device that separates it from what other people already have access to? And lastly, my running point as to why I have a hard time getting pumped or excited about an M4 fan family of chips is because, like I said, 10 to 20% performance gains year over year. And I'm still rocking an M1 Max MacBook Pro that has been aging great. And you can still find these MacBooks on Amazon or on Best Buy or through even Apple certified refurbished. And you can get really fast, really capable Macs that are just a couple of years old that practically have no noticeable difference between them and the newer MacBooks that are supposed to be coming out around the corner. So how much can just a slight performance boost really win over sales for these devices, it's really probably going to come down to Apple thinking of more AI features, which may or may not be very useful or practical, and software locking them to the latest hardware. I wouldn't be surprised if the Apple marketing team already has some branding involved with no longer having a neural engine, but specific Apple AI cores, and you need those AI cores to access certain software features that they're just straight up not going to give to the older MacBooks, because if we just look at the design, yeah, they're all still the same. They all still look great. They all still have decent ports. And if we look at the performance in the real world tests, yeah, even a M1 Pro MacBook from several years ago is still going to have great battery life. It's
that's still going to have great performance and still easily get you another five or six years of software updates. I kind of get tired of the argument over and over again that, well, I should spend more money to get a newer MacBook, even if I don't really care that much about the newer features or the better performance, because I just want more years of software support. And let me tell you, as someone who used an iMac Pro very, very late into its support life, the differences between a Mac that's five years old and seven years old in terms of software support is not that different. You're going to be getting very slight different features. Most likely, if Apple's heading in this AI-focused direction, you're going to need the latest, latest version in order to access a lot of these features. It's not going to matter whether you bought the five-year-old version or the six-year-old version. You're going to get very, very similar experiences when the MacBooks are that old anyway. So if you're the kind of guy that plans on buying a new Mac every four years, why are you worried about software support? And if you are the kind of person to hold on to it for eight to ten years, then the differences in software features you're going to experience between buying a two-year difference between slightly different MacBook models, it's going to be so small that you wouldn't spend the extra $400 on that software feature if it was available to you in the future. So that's really the hardest sale here. Apple's greatest threat is themselves. I have a very hard time trying to figure out why I would need to upgrade my MacBook Pro. I'm curious if you guys feel the same way, so feel free to let me know your thoughts and predictions for the M4 family down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you on the next one.